to this year's Engine Week. It's time to learn all about engines in aviation. All right, so welcome back to Engine Week uh, Part 2. This is the second series of doing the Engine Week. Might be bringing this back uh, every year, but for now, it's every two years. And right now, I'm in Shelbyville, Tennessee, home of Arian Aircraft and Jabiru USA. And we're going to talk all about Jabiru engines today. All right, Nick, go ahead and reintroduce yourself to everybody um, and what you do here at both Arian and Jabiru real quick. Okay, so Arian Aircraft, um, we are the U.S. importer of Jabiru engines, sales support and overhauls. Um, we bring in the new engines, the new parts, if you want to rebuild stuff or you want to buy new engines. We also do firewall forward kits for a lot of popular kit aircraft. Um, this airplane you see behind us is the Lightning. Uh, it is our design. It's a kit aircraft or a factory sport uh, aircraft that you can buy turnkey. So that's what we do here. We offer builder assist programs for many different experimental aircraft as well. Awesome. So let's go through just some of the basics of somebody's uh, engine shopping mm -hmm. and don't know anything about the option for Jabiru. Sure. What does Jabiru have to offer these days? Um, this engine right here is the most popular. We probably sell 10 of these for every one of the 2200s we sell. This is the 3300. Uh, it's a 120 horsepower, air-cooled, direct drive aircraft engine. Uh, it's not a conversion. Uh, I get that question sometimes, which is not a problem, but this one is a ground-up uh, design for aircraft. Uh, Jabiru designed these engines back in the uh, early 90s. And with the 2200, which is a four cylinder, 85 horsepower engine, and uh, then it grew into the 3300, which is the most popular today. Um, so it's offered, it's real popular in uh, a lot of the Zenith type airplanes, Ranses, uh, Sonic, stuff like that. A lot of the light aircraft, like you see here with Lightning, and uh, we have firewall four kits for those as well. So. And it's a six cylinder yes, with 3300, so it sounds really good at, at idle and at RPM. It does. Uh, dual ignition, um, you know, it's got integrated ignition, integrated alternator in the back. It's very smooth, it's very clean, uh, quiet engine, especially if you choose the muffler, but uh, you know, the Sonics guys like to run open pipes, so they sound really good with an open pipe on them. Sure, sure. So, uh, what, what are some of the numbers on this and, and uh, maintenance wise as far as like what's the TBO and what do you do maintenance intervals? Um, Typical maintenance, 25 hour oil changes. Um, there's a thousand hour recommended top and a 2000 hour major on the engine. Otherwise, uh, we we fuel it and fly it. There isn't much more to do the Gen 4. That's why they're so popular over the previous generations where you had to torque heads and adjust valves and things like that. So this engine really is a maintenance free engine other than oil changes. And are those maintenance intervals, is it possible for the owner to, to perform those or what can they do and what is better that you do or the factory um, does? Absolutely. Uh, even on our factory light sports, oil changes, things, spark plug changes, uh, magnetos and things like that, all very capable with the owner. Um, top end overhaul work, major overhaul work, we'd recommend we bring it here, although we do sell kits for the engine. It's still an experimental engine, it's not certified, uh, although uh, you know, it follows some of the LSA, ASTM certification stuff. Uh, so uh, the owner is more than capable of doing it if they, if they so choose and they're mechanically inclined. It's not a real complicated engine. So. And a thousand hours is quite a long time away. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're flying a hundred hours a year, which is the average flying of uh, the average pilot, um, that, it's talking you know 10 years. Yeah. So, but when it comes to that, what is considered the top? What is inclusive of that? Um, it's really like you'd think just the cylinder stuff. So pistons and rings, new valves. Um, they do use a new connecting rod, uh, bearings and bolts. Other than that, um, that's about what encompasses a top end overhaul on the engine. Just to freshen up the top end to keep the compressions good to the 2000 hour mark. Okay, okay. Now I'm up here this weekend. Um, Nick holds several classes, engine classes throughout the year. I think it's, is it two you try to shoot for? Uh, yeah, two or three. You know, in the summertime it's too hot in here to do that kind of stuff, but we try to do it kind of in this uh, spring and fall type. So it's a two-day course. Explain what that is and how much it costs and that kind of stuff. Uh, two-day course, very hands-on, very driven by the customer um, or the, the student really, which is what you say. And so um, 350 bucks for the two days. You come in and we're going to talk engine parts systems because some people you know, they've never seen a piston before or a valve. So we have all the parts laid out. We talk about how they work. We talk about how they are related to maintenance. Um, we go through things that we think the 
uh, customer of the aircraft or the builder of the airplane may be able to do. Maybe, maybe he's got low compression, needs to pull the cylinder off and lap valves or something like that. We think that's something a lot of owners can probably do. So we'll cover that kind of stuff uh, in the course. We do prop strike runouts. We do um, how to measure and hone cylinders and stuff like that, lap valves. Uh, and then the other kind of maintenance, if you have a, a previous generation engine like a 1, 2, or a 3, where you do have to do valve adjustments and head torques, we still cover those. Because remember, Gen 4 is a great engine. It's, it's new. It's been out for a couple of years. But you know, up until now, everything else has had head torques and valve adjustments that had to be done. So the, the majority of the fleet in the United States has some more maintenance to do for the engine. So, so that's what we cover a lot in the class, stuff that the, these guys can do. So if you've never seen one of these engines up close, that gives you an opportunity to actually touch the majority of the parts because they've got a lot of old parts on the yeah. on the shelf, so you can <laughs> kind of like pull them off and take a look at them, rotate them around, um, go through the carburetors, yes, see how they're made and how they operate and how to adjust them. So it, it is, like you said, very hands-on and very informative. So. Um, I feel like I'm going to leave here knowing a lot more about this engine option yeah, after this weekend. Hopefully. And then you also came over here and talked again on, and we'll show this in another video, um, the, one of the most important things about any engine, and that is the installation and keeping it cool. Yes. And we had a good long discussion yesterday about doing just that, installing the engine and how everything is set up here, the intake runners and how best you can install it to have the best outcome. Yeah, that's, uh, we make the joke at the beginning of class is the, the point to class is to make sure your engine doesn't end up in my class as a prop, right? So, and installation starts there. You know, the air ducts and, and, and the cooling of the engine and the oil pan, the oil cooler and stuff. So we really cover that hard. Um, and even wiring things, how to wire your PMA or your magnetos and things and how to make sure you're not going to get engine noise in your radio and where that all comes from. And then we move on to the maintenance portion, so. And the benefit for that to me is that um, Nick here isn't the manufacturer, he's a dealer, but he's also uh, a builder assist center. Yep. So he has a lot of experience installing these in many different airframes. So being able to share that hands-on experience of installations and kind of the things they've learned throughout the years, I felt was very helpful. Thank you. Yeah, we've got, um, even though, you know, we, we took over the sales and support of the engine in 2018 uh, when Pete retired, um, I've been around the Jabber engine for almost 20 years now. So um, You learned a, th a thing or two. A thing or two. And mostly from making mistakes and things like that, like we all do. You know, that's how we learn. But, uh, and just from experience, dealing with uh, customers and what they've run into and what we've run to in installations and stuff. So. So this is our, our um, racing scales that we uh, we have bought, and we, we use these to weight and balance aircraft. They're good within 1% at 2,000 pounds. So we got 174 pounds on the scale. That was with it zeroed out earlier. And uh, so we're a little bit under the 178 that Jabber tells us it should be. Um, we've got a goodie bag here we'll pile on there. Of course, you know, in all fairness, we've got some cardboard and Ziploc bags there, so I'm not really sure of that, but we're gonna put that on there. There we go, what did that get us? All right, 177. Okay. So here's a muffler with some bubble wrap on it. You know, let's be, <laughs> let's be fair. There All right, we go. so the muffler, engine, goodie bag. Now, now that goodie bag, I think, is the, the offset there of 182. 182, okay. So we're, we're pretty close. We're breaking the bank a little bit. And there are the composite air ducts that go with it. All right, so everything needed to run the engine, everything in the kit, there you go, people. There we go, fellow builders. An exact weight as it comes out of the box so, from Jabru. So, you know, the 178 that uh, is advertised, we're a little under that without all these goodies. We put them on there, we're just a little over that. So I guess you can call that a wash. <laughs> we are partnering with great companies like Dynon Avionics at Dynon.com. AirTech Coatings at AirTechCoatings.com. Clemens Insurance at ClemensInsurance.net The Aviators Clinic at AviatorsClinic.com Foxtrot 95 Calhoun County Airport at FlyFoxtrot95.com Take a moment to go visit their websites at the links found below in the description of this video. And visit our website at ExperimentalAircraftChannel.com for events, our video library arranged in easy to find playlists on specific topics, affiliate products, aviation merchandise, and so much more. All right, let's talk a few numbers here, and that's sure. uh, lead times if you wanted to order an engine today, uh, and also the price points. 
Well, the lead time is a bit long. Um, unfortunately, we're a year out. Uh, is that bad? Is it good? Um, it is what it is. Uh, during uh, last year, they had a, a bit of a shortage of crankshafts and some other outside source parts, which stopped production for a while. So uh, once production ramped back up and started, they had all those long back <clears> orders to fill. Uh, plus all the sales of these engines. So, yeah, it's a long wait time, um, about a year, but for most builders who are building airplanes at home, unless they're retired and doing it every day, that's really not that long. I mean, you've been building one, I've built airplanes before uh, at home. And, and that's on the engine and, you offer yes. the Firewall Ford package, so you could go ahead and order that oh, yeah. so and install that in your aircraft. Firewall Ford, four to six weeks, you okay. know, if we don't have all the cowlings and things in stock. So you could get the cowling, get the motor mount, get the air boxes and coolers and things and start working on all that kind of stuff. But um, but the engine's about a year out, um, $2,000 deposit, so that's not a big cash out for most builders to hold a production slot. Um, and then, uh, you know, right now we're 21000 for a new engine. So, but the engine, again, you get that engine, you get the air ducts, you get the ignition coils, the stator, the starter. I mean, it, it, it's really everything you need but a prop. And if you order a firewall four kit, you get all the rest of that stuff. So. so if you're in the market right now for choosing the kit, when you choose the kit, buy the kit, also pick up the phone and order your engine at the same time. If you, if you want the Jabber, yeah. yeah. Yeah, give us an order, get it in there. And, 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 you know, and if you get to the point a year down the road and you're not ready, we can shift it down a little bit, just like anybody else. So it's not a big deal. So the price point on the uh, 3300 six cylinder is around 21. It's 21, yeah. And the four cylinder, which is not as popular, but still used in the lighter yeah, aircraft. It's 18. Are, it's around 18. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And, and, then, and then the third option, or the, the second, third option would be, um, You've got a lot of, not a lot, but a few, was it Gen 2s and Gen 3s that mm -hmm. show up, people want to yeah. trade in yep. and do the Gen 4s, so what are you offering that as far as reconditioned or remanufactured? Or So right now, uh, again with a little bit of a lead time we've got going on, um, there was a point in time where you know, a guy would get to a thousand hours or whatever and they'd just buy a Gen 4 and put it in there because it was a short lead time. Now we've got a little bit more of the people choosing to do overhauls, so we're doing a lot more of those overhauls right now. But on the other side of that, the guys that have bought Gen 4s, um, I've got some Gen 2s and Gen 3 cores that we took in on trade that I can overhaul. And so if somebody would want something, they can call me and talk to me and we can discuss what the price point would be on that engine. And it would very much uh, depend on what the, the customer is looking for. Because we can do, you know, just take the engine and top it and send it out the door, or uh, we can do upgrades and stuff like that that are not necessarily required by service bulletins or ADs, but that they might want to have done to it, that sure. they don't need done to it. So, so the price range on one that would be overhauled probably be anywhere from ten to fourteen thousand on, a, on a, either a zero time bottom end or a top end engine. So. Okay, and what, what are the lead times on that? That's must say, hey, let me do a used overhauled one. Probably then. twelve weeks, something like that. Weeks, if so. we did one, yeah. Um, and we've got a couple of cores on the floor we can do. We've just been we've been pretty busy doing other you know other maintenance and stuff right now. So, all right. Well, thanks for the uh, the update on Jabaru. Again, if you want to talk to Nick about either ordering an engine uh, new, doing an overhauled, or simply uh, the class, which I do recommend. Thank um, you. How can people <laughs> get in touch fun. with you? Um, uh, uh, Arian Aircrafts, flylightning.net, uh, 931-680-1781 is the phone number. Um, find us on Facebook uh, or uh, some probably links on, on Brian's experimental page. So, yeah. Sounds good. All right. Appreciate the time. And uh, again, give Nick a call and um, also come out and just check out his shop. There's always a lot of fun things going on next door. He's got two hangers here. I think I counted yesterday 13 projects on the floor, another four in paint. Yes. Um, so, so being a build we're assist, some. <laughs> you're hiding some. We're hiding some, yeah. So being a build assist center and um, and so forth, there's always some really cool projects going on here. A lot on the fiberglass end of things because of the Arian aircraft are all fiberglass. But he also does. Uh, I think I saw a Zenith over there and a Rans and there's an RV8 and a Glass Air Super 2 RG right now. And how some. many aircraft have you first first flights uh, test flown? Uh, I it's. A lot, but yeah, three or four hundred first flights myself. I mean, that's not even exaggerating. We've been doing this a long time, and, and different types. I couldn't tell you. I mean, so that's mostly an, all experimental airplanes. There's another thing for you right there. If you, if you got to the point where you're you're done and you're not sure you want to do your your first flight, centrally located in the United States and Tennessee, yeah. Nick has a lot of experience. He's a, he's a great test pilot. Yeah. Well, and, uh, <laughs> we do pretty good. We haven't had no, any trouble, so that's, I haven't that's flown with him. I, <laughs> yeah, see. Yeah. But I say that just because of the mindset he has and, and, and the protocol. Yeah. Like we discuss 
off camera before about different things like going up and literally turning on every last switch and light and everything trying to to make things overheat or blow a fuse or yeah. over the I mean, airport. That's yeah. done over I think the we airport. We had a really good podcast about that, about we did. flight testing and we stuff. Did. And I, no, flight testing is, um, I find that for just a short snippet there, that um, you know, don't take anything for granted and, and always treat it. Everything is, it, you know, something's always going to happen, you know, whenever you're doing a first flight. So um, everybody, it's funny, uh, home builders that on all these Facebook pages are building airplanes. When are you going to do your first flight? You know what? I don't ever tell anybody. The only people that ever know I'm going to do a first flight are my office people, so they know I'm out. Um, but you know, too There's much enough can pressure, happen. Enough pressure is. and enough um, expect. You know, you, you might get out there and not want to fly it. Oh, bad weather, bad wind. The plane's not ready. You know, don't force yourself. Anyways, that's that's a whole. We could talk all how about airplanes all day. So <laughs> the aviation but. conversation. Thanks for watching today's episode of Engine Week. Tune in tomorrow for the next video in our series. And we invite you right now to like, subscribe, and hit that bell so you don't miss a single episode.